see the train driver walking around. Yeah, I think we've been spotted. Hey, what's going on, you cheeky little buggers? Hope you're having a shit one. Me and Lamont are just walking around the city today. We're gonna try and do some more long exposures tonight, do a bit more night photography. And there's a spot I found up here because I was actually taking the train one day. As per usual, I'm always looking out for photography locations. I was like, hey, you know what? I think this would be a cool place to come take photos sometime. It's like, it's like a little building or whatever. So I, was, I thought like, oh, maybe we could get up onto the rooftop or something, but... It looks like they don't want any visitors. You yeah. know what though? It actually doesn't say keep out. It just, yeah, it just looks like we can't go in, but yeah, you're right actually. It doesn't technically say we can't go in here. And if they didn't want people in, they'd take a bit more pride and maintenance in their bloody fence. Yeah. I mean, look at that fence. Who the fuck, who, who the fuck put that fence I up? I don't know what's happening. That fence looks like me and you after editing drunk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, what do you say we walk into the city, just do literally anything, while, and just wait for it to get a bit darker? Okay, let's do that. Yeah, okay, let's go for a little walk. How British do these houses look? They actually, look, like, they, they do. They it honestly looks, do look really British. Like You just get a little bit of everything here in Melbourne, it's great. We're even on Wellington Parade. Yeah. That even sounds British. Wellington. Hello. Wellington. Beef Wellington. <laughs> oh, that's where it's from. Yeah. Because <laughs> Gordon Ramsay cooks it and he's yeah. British. He Even the two. The two looks British. It's like the horn. font is like... It looks horn. posh. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like it will serve you champagne. With a beef Wellington. Sauce. With a beef Wellington in, in the champagne. In the champagne. <laughs> 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 Do you reckon you could honestly fit through that? I'm skinny enough to do it. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> okay, I think we're sweet. Oh, Fuck, man. that is a cool view. But I feel like there are people here. This car's here. That means if there's cars here, that means there's people somewhere here. Up there, on that little rooftop, that's where you want to be. That's going to make this shot so much better. The only way to do it is the dumbest way ever, is to just climb around the ladder. It's just, it's just not fucking worth it's it. It's not worth it. It's such a cool shot here. I might just try and take one photo here. See if I can just edit it later. Yeah, I was thinking, if you like get up there and just sit with your legs dangling off, this would be a fucking sick shot. Wait for a train to come past. I'll take two photos and then see if I can match them together later. Can you sit a bit more dangling towards me? So one one leg is on there. Yeah, go okay, up. Okay, we're about to finish up this photo shoot and wait for that last train to come through. And it literally just stopped. I see the train driver walking around. Really? Yeah, I think we've been spotted. Really? I'm not sure, but it's probably a good time to leave. Here, just follow me. If we just duck down, he won't see us. All right, let's get the fuck out of here. I didn't quite get all the shots I wanted, but it is definitely time to leave. Okay, so I opened up the image in Photoshop and I basically just merged these two photos together just by using the light and blend mode. So now I've got the train in the shot and Lamont up here. And we did want that other train coming through here, but I'm pretty sure there was a train driver looking at us. I'm not 100% sure if he knew that we were there or not because we were pretty hidden. I just decided not to risk it, but it would have been cool if we had like a train passing by like right here really close, lighting all of this up. But anyway, it's never worth risking your life or getting in trouble with the cops. So, I didn't bother. So basically, I'm gonna try and create a night preset off this image that's actually gonna go into my preset pack. That was kind of like the whole reason of going out and taking this photo is so I could use this photo and some of the other photos that we shot around the area. I pretty much just wanted to walk you through how I was gonna make a night preset. I just figured you may have found this video helpful. Basically just gonna start with bringing in the actual blues and the temperature here. Bring the exposure up so I can see what I'm working with. I might take a bit of contrast out to start with. Take the highlights out, take the shadows out just to sort of see 
what is there. When I start editing the image, obviously I put the blues in at the top here with the temperature. I just bring it down because then we're gonna, we're gonna fuck with that later in the colors here and also in the camera calibration. But mainly, most of the tones in the image is gonna come from the tone curve. That's why it's called a tone curve, because that's where you get your tones. As we move the basic settings around, if you watch the tone curve down here, that's actually gonna affect each other. So if I move the tone curve, all of these lines here are gonna move as well. Um, but if I move it back, this tone curve is gonna, it's gonna keep taking new shapes and forms and stuff. I don't know what these little mountain things here mean, but what I do know is that if you see here, there's a gap between the actual start of the square here on the border and then where the mountain actually starts. And that's where in between this little part here, that's where you're gonna notice like the faded part of the image, right? With a washed out look. So if you bring your shadow icon or the shadows here across, that's really gonna help crush your blacks and essentially work in the same way contrast does. However, you can just sort of fine tune it a lot more with the tone curve because you can bring it up and down and then a bit more to the right if you want, a bit more to the left. I'm gonna put three dots in the tone curve because that's just how I learned editing. So one here and I'm just gonna sort of make like a slight arch, very slight sort of S shape, S curve which is like a term that some people use in editing. It's like making an S curve where you bring your highlights up and your shadows down and that's sort of making that contrasty look. I might just take a bit of saturation out because of the amount of colors that we're gonna be fucking with. It doesn't need to be that oversaturated. But speaking of colors, I generally just go straight to the blues and then mess with those and then I figure out the rest later. Pretty much, I'm gonna sit around negative 20 for the blues. I'm gonna bring some saturation out of it and I'm actually gonna bring up some luminance, which is basically the detail in the color. So if I bring it all out, it basically underexposes one type of color. But we need the blues in night sort of images, so I might actually bring it, bring it up a bit, about 15%. Now the thing is with blue photos, uh, the color blue is mixed with aqua and purple. So I'm gonna bring some purples out of it actually, so I can bring all the purples across to the blues just to give it a bit of extra punch. I'm gonna take out some purple so to get rid of some of the saturation. So I don't wanna make it too oversaturated. And that's also why I took a bit of saturation out of the image as well because I didn't want it to be too over blaring with the blue even though they pretty much end up like that anyway. I'm also gonna bring some saturation up in the warmer colors. So with the reds, the oranges, the yellows, bring some luminance out of them. So pretty much with the split toning, this is kind of going to give you a little bit of extra color kick in your image. I'm not going to go into split toning too much, like explaining it, but basically it's modifying the color in the highlights and the shadows of your images, more than what actually modifying each color does and the temperature in your image. It's just like, like I said, it's a little bit of an extra kick. So these are my split toning settings. So I've got 217, 20, minus 10, 235, 15. That's before split toning, and that's after. See how I just get a little bit more blue out of it? Tiny little bit. I actually might even bring the saturation because these this image has got a lot of shadows in it, so just when I start putting this across on other images, I might actually bring the saturation down to about 5%. All right, lastly, we're gonna go into the camera calibration. This is basically telling how your image is gonna interpret each one of these colors. So I want if I want the reds to be interpreted more orange, I'm gonna slide that across here. If I want my blues to be interpreted as more aqua, I think I might take some of the greens out. And that kind of helps keep the blue color, but give that sort of desaturated look to it. So you see when it was back normal up here at zero, it's very saturated at the top here where it doesn't really need to be. So I'm gonna take out some of the greens here and it sort of keeps that blue sort of look, but it doesn't saturate it as much. Now we're pretty much ready to make the actual preset. So I'm just gonna click on the little icon here, create preset, I'm gonna put it into night two because it's gonna go into my night pack for my new presets and we'll call it, this is fucking illegal. Pretty much you want every single one of these ticked um, D Hayes, you can tick that. We didn't use that, so I'm not gonna tick it. Not your graduated filter. You don't want any of these ticked except for process version. So as Lightroom updates, your presets will update with Lightroom. That's basically what this kind of means. Yeah, whatever. Great. So now if we go across to this image, this preset will pretty much show how I want the night to look. And we go to this one, put the this is fucking illegal preset on. There you go. And there's the before and after. And you can even fine tune a bit more from here. Let's say for this for this shot, you want it a bit more warmer. Just bring the temperature across a bit more. 
you know, you got the, you can sort of bring a bit of saturation back into the greens of the grass here and the brick building. You can even bring the vibrance back into it if you want. You can add a bit more clarity. Maybe you want less shadows or maybe you want more shadows. And just for the sake of it, let's actually go to a night shot that I shot a while ago. Like this photo, if you haven't seen this video, it's somewhere on my channel. You can go fucking find it. This is fucking illegal. Hey, look at that. I oh, know. <laughs> it's a bit yellow. They say we just bring the temperature down a little bit and there you go. That is literally it. Like I literally just moved the temperature and it just changed the whole image. Presets are fucking awesome. I love presets. <laughs> they actually speed up my editing so much and they're really fun to work with. At least I think so. I think a massive misconception of presets is that some presets work with one click and then you go and then you got in then you got an awesome edited shot, but it's not always the case. So in this preset pack, the new one, my current ones have it as well, but the new preset pack that we will be releasing with all these presets, you know, cars, nature, night, street, and some universal ones I've made as well. They all do different things for all types of different photos, and they will each come with a video tutorial of me explaining how to use the preset, how to fine tune it on your image, and what kind of photos you wanna be using these presets on. So that's why we've added 25 presets into a pack, because then you've got a fuckload of different presets that do a fuckload of different things. So if you bring up an image, a really super random image, into your edit suite, then you're gonna know that one of these presets will work with those conditions. So that's why I've gone out and shot in like a bunch of different conditions to make every single one of these presets. I just thought I'd walk you through the process of me going out shooting one of these photos and how I sort of make an edit work over a bunch of different photos. I'm hoping to release this entire pack for you to use uh, next month in February. It's just taking, it's just gonna take a few more weeks for Liam and I to make the new website. We just, we're moving over from Wix to Shopify. So I need to basically redesign a whole new website. Um, and then plus on top of that, we're also making merch as well that we're gonna be releasing with the new presets. So we're gonna be making hoodies, t-shirts, hats. So I'm also working with a graphic designer at the moment, making logos and making cool designs for you. So there's a fuckload of shit that's happening right now, but I love it. You know, I love the grind. I love making shit happen and I like being busy. So there's a lot going on. I'm editing videos, I'm making presets, I'm making merch, and then I still gotta have a fucking social life. I still need to try and see girls and shit to be a normal boy. <laughs> so there's a lot going on, and it's gonna be a really exciting year. I hope I taught you something new in today's video. I definitely learned a lot about trespassing slash not trespassing, because there wasn't a sign that said we couldn't do that. But I hope I taught you something new today. If you did like this video, Leave a like down below or consider give me a subscription um, little subscribe thing over there. But with that all said and done, have a shit one. <laughs>